If you're in your first few years of software development, chances are you're making some of these common mistakes. Today I'm going to be giving you five actionable things that you can be doing in your day-to-day -day software development that will immediately make you a better programmer and that your teammates are going to thank you for. These tips aren't just for C-sharp or the Microsoft stack, they can be applied to any language you use or whichever framework you use. So let's get into it. New developers tend to write a lot of comments about their own code while they're learning to help explain their own code to themselves. Unfortunately, this is a trend that stays with developers way after their learning years. The problem with comments is that they never get maintained along with the code that they are written for. What tends to happen is the code will change in the future. The teammate will come in, make a change to the code or the functionality, but won't be bothered to change the comment. Now we have a situation where the comment says that the code does one thing, but the actual code does something else. This leads to a lot of confusion because somebody else later on will come and read the code and then they will not, sh not sure is the comment right and the code is buggy or is the comment wrong and the code is right. To avoid the confusion, leave the comments out. If you must write a comment, write a comment about why the code was written, not what the code does. Any developer worth their salt should be able to read the code and understand what it does, but they often might not know the reason a some weird code might have been put there. It may be a domain specific thing that a customer has asked for, something out of the ordinary, write comments as to why weird code exists. Commenting out code also leads to a lot of confusion. If you have a piece of code that you want to get rid of, but you not sure if you may use it later, often new developers will comment out the code and forget about it. This will lead to confusion later on because someone will come back in and look at the code and not sure if that code is supposed to be there, if it was only removed temporarily and needs to be put back. If you're worried about using that code again in the future or it being lost, there's no need as long as you're using source control that will code will be available to you in the repository. If you're copying code from another source, let's say it's AI generated code, ChatGPT will often flood the, the code base with comments to help you help explain what the code does. Ask the AI to remove any explanatory comments before copying and pasting that in your code. This is by far the most important and fundamental item on this list. 90% of programming is just coming up with good names. Coming up with good descriptive names really makes your code self-documenting, removing the need for you to write additional comments explaining what your code does. Too many developers are scared of long variable names. Rather have a long descriptive variable name rather than something short and confusing. Avoid abbreviations unless they're commonly known. Put yourself in the shoes of another developer who might be reading your code. Will they understand what you've meant by a particular abbreviation. The same applies with being clever and trying to put witty jokes in your in your code. The chances are the person reading your code afterwards isn't even going to get the joke or doesn't know that pop culture reference or that meme that you're referring to. Rather just be clear. And the absolute worst is using profanity in your code. There comes a time with all of us where we are super frustrated with the thing we're working on. Just resist the urge to swear and curse all over the code base. Um, there's a good chance you might end up forgetting about it and leaving it in there. And it is an, an embarrassment and just generally unprofessional if that ends up in the hands where your teammates could read it or worst case scenario, it gets shipped to a third party or to a customer where there's some chance of someone else viewing it. Don't swear in your code, no matter how frustrated you are. So once you've written a method, take two minutes afterwards and just read over it and think, how can I name some of my variables slightly better that myself in five years time will know what's going on in this code? Most IDEs have a name refactoring option in uh, built in so that you can rename a variable in one place and it will rename that variable throughout the code base. So much detail about code is inferred from the way it is formatted. Having your code indented in the wrong way could result in a couple of things. Anyone scanning over the code might misinterpret an if statement or a while loop if it's indented differently. Also, you're more likely to frustrate the person reading your code after the fact. If they first need to go and clean up the code themselves before having to work on it, that tends to frustrate them before they've even started. Keep your code spaced out. 
Remember, you are writing code for other humans to read. We all take code from another source that has had exactly the same problem and just paste it into our project. If you are going to use source code from another party, make sure you understand the reason it's there and some of the finer workings of what it's doing. There's really no excuse of this nowadays when you could take a piece of code you're about to use and have ChatGPT explain it to you before you actually paste it in. If you don't do this, you've got the chance of adding irrelevant code to the code base. And worst case scenario, you could be adding damaging code to the code base. So many new developers only ever use breakpoints. Because breakpoints halt the execution of an application, this can give you some weird behavior when working or trying to debug a multi-threaded application. A much safer mechanism when you've got lots of threads running simultaneously is to print debug messages to the screen. A lot of IDEs support conditional logic with your debug messages. This is great for when you're running a small snippet of code on an IDE that doesn't have a debugger attached, like the free version of Link Linkpad, for example. If you're too lazy to write your own debug statements, give it to ChatGPT or Gemini and tell it to add the messages for you. You can then go and fine tune them yourself. Ideally, good debugging will use a mix of breakpoints and debug statements. Thank you so much for watching. I have another one of these specifically for the Blazor development lifecycle, or if you just prefer a more general programming video, yeah, give it a go, you might like it. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.